Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. In this section we're going to look at recurring tasks. Now the use of recurring tasks may not be something that you've come across before and if you're going to use the technique of recurring tasks you need to be a little bit careful about one or two of the limitations that apply. You also need to understand quite clearly how to set recurring tasks up correctly. Now, let me start by giving you an example of where you might use a recurring task. And I'm going to create a little project here comprising just of recurring tasks. But of course, you can create recurring tasks within any kind of project. And the example that I'm going to use is an example of a progress meeting. And it's going to be, in our case, on a certain day of the month. It's going to be on the 29th of the month each month and it's going to be a three hour meeting on the afternoon of the 29th. So it's going to run from 1400 hours to 1700 hours. Now given that sort of pattern if you are managing a project that say lasted about a year you'd be looking at about a dozen progress meetings. Now this is the first very important point to bear in mind. If you're going to set those up as a recurring task, you need to be in a situation where you will not often vary from that pattern. In fact, you're in a situation where you pretty much stick to that pattern all of the time. Now, there are some natural variations. So, for instance, the 29th of the month isn't always on a working day. Now, Project 2019 can cope with that sort of natural variation, so that's just fine. But if what in fact happens is that every month you decide what time of day you're going to have the meeting and you decide that it's not going to be on the 29th, it's going to be on the 24th or some other apparently fairly random change each time, then recurring tasks are definitely not the way to go. You need something that really is pretty consistent, although as I say, Project 2019 can deal with some of the more obvious natural variations. Now before we do this, I just want to demonstrate one other thing and that is something that a surprisingly large number of people don't generally get to do with project. And that is to use times as well as dates in start and finish. Quite often you don't need to do it. People tend to schedule in terms of whole days. But let me just adjust these column widths very, very slightly. Let's move that across and give these a little bit more room. And then I'm going to go into File and down to Options. And on the General page, I'm going to reset the date format to include Time. And click on OK. All right, so now what I'm going to do is to create my recurring task. So on the Task tab, in the Insert group, on the Task drop-down, we have an option there for recurring task. And that brings up the recurring task information dialog. Now I'm going to give my recurring task a name and we're going to call it project meeting. Now the duration of the task in this case is just three hours. And the recurrence pattern is what I define next. So this is going to occur monthly and we're going to say we want this to occur on the 29th of every month. So now I need to enter in the range of recurrence. So I'm going to select the uh, 29th of May, which is fine, but I also need to edit the time just here. So I'm going to change that to 2 p.m. I then need to specify when this recurrence is going to end and I have two options. I can end after a specified amount of occurrences or I can end by a specific date and time. So I'm going to say end after and we'll do seven occurrences. And the final thing I need to specify here is the calendar. So is there a calendar for this recurring task? Well, I'm just going to use the standard calendar. And then I click on OK. 
So now what happens is that Project 2019 tries to schedule these project meetings for me. And if it runs into any problems with any of them, it will tell me here and give me options of what I want to do. Now, in this case, what's happened is that for two of the dates or two of the tasks, they are scheduled to occur on a non-working day. And it really gives me three options. My first option is I can click yes, and it will reschedule it for the next available working time. Now, in this case, that may well be at the beginning of a Monday morning. If the problem here is it's hitting a weekend day, then the meeting will finish up scheduled for early Monday morning. Now, we'll address that in just a moment. If, on the other hand, I decide that all that happens that month is that we won't have a meeting, then I click no, and then that particular task occurrence will not be created. And then the third option is to stop the operation entirely. So basically, I've seen the problem and I thought, OK, I don't know what I want to do about this. I better not proceed creating these tasks. If that's how I feel, then I just click cancel. Now, on this occasion, I'm quite happy for it to create the project meeting task on the next working day. So I'm going to click yes. And you can see that for each of them, there is a three hour duration. And you'll see that for two of them, so task number three here and also task number six, they've been rescheduled to the first available working day. So that's July the 1st and September the 30th, respectively. Now, unfortunately, for those tasks, it actually makes the meeting from 8 a.m. in the morning until 11 a.m. But I can, in fact, go into these tasks by right clicking and selecting information. And just manually update that. And click OK. I'm going to do the other one and I will see you in a moment. Now, setting up recurring tasks in this way would probably save me quite a bit of time. It's certainly better than creating seven different meetings. But going back to something that I said earlier on, if each of those meetings did have a very specific difference from the others, so if each of them had some uh, particular features, then it might well turn out better in the long run to schedule them individually. And another aspect of that is if, for example, we change our minds and decide that it was going to be a two hour meeting from three till five on the 29th. If I select that recurring task itself, which effectively works the sort of summary task, right click and then select information. And if I then change the duration to two hours, and change the time down here to 3 p.m. and click OK and click Yes again. It would delete and recreate all of those individual tasks again. So what will happen is that my exception, the two that I just demonstrated, I would need to put them back again. So if you remember, we had two tasks. It was this one here task uh, three and also task six down here, we would need to go back in and edit them individually as well. So I've covered there the main points in relation to recurring tasks, but there are a couple of other things to add. One of them is that when you're creating a recurring task and specifying how many times it's going to recur or when it's going to stop recurring, there is no limitation based on the end date of the project. So you can easily schedule this recurring task way beyond the end of the project. If that happens, you will actually then extend the project up to the end of these recurring tasks. So you do need to be careful that you're not actually scheduling too far off into the future. And another useful thing to know is how to collapse and expand. So if you double click on this case, the project meeting summary task, it will collapse up all of those meetings. Double click again to expand. And also note the little icon there. If we hover over it, 
you'll see it says that this task occurs seven times between May the 29th, 2019 at 3 p.m. and November the 29th, 2019. The calendar standard is assigned to this task. And perhaps the final thing to point out here is I haven't assigned resources here, but supposing I want to select the recurring task itself and assign resources. So let's right click and select Assign Resources. So now you can go in and choose one, two or all three if you want to. I'm just going to choose uh, two of them. And click Close. And let's just widen this column out a little bit. And there you can see that those team members have been assigned to all of the meetings or all of the individual tasks. And perhaps just one other thing, going back to when we actually created this task, one of the options towards the bottom, if you remember, was we selected the calendar for scheduling this task. So scheduling ignores resource calendars. So let's suppose that you actually assigned the resources to this task and one of the resources was on holiday on a particular day. They were having some annual leave. If all of the resource calendars were taken into account, then Project 2019 wouldn't be able to schedule the meeting for that day. If you want to follow the principle, which will often be the case in things like project meetings, that basically you're going to schedule the meeting and anybody who happens to be on holiday isn't going to be there, then you can right click and go back into information and just check this box, scheduling ignores resource calendars. So that's it on recurring tasks. I will see you in the next section. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now to get a free Microsoft Project 2019 course, including downloadable exercise files, go ahead and click right over there. And click right over there to watch all the videos in this Project 2019 Beginners Playlist.